Glory, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for tuning in, my friends, to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I am your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and of course, it's always the hour for revival. Bless the Lord. We're going to air Sister White tuning in. Praise God. Lord, I thank you that she's going to be able to get on here with no trouble in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, glory. Hallelujah. Well, glory. There we go. Praise God. Two people have already tuned in. Thank you, Jesus. Three people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Sister White, God bless you. I'm so glad you could tune in tonight to this hour for revival telecast. Amen. Amen. Pastor Riley, God bless you, Brother James. I love you. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? I can. I can't see you, but I can hear you. Praise you know, the Lord. Amen. If that's what it wants to play at, that's just fine. Maybe it'll catch that's up. Right. <laughs> Amen. That's it. Amen. <laughs> We got a lot of people jumping on here today. Wow. Glory to God. We just want to tell you all, Mm. if if you're finding yourself in a place of fear right now because Milton's coming through, Mm -hmm. I want you to read Psalm 91 out loud like a prayer. I'm telling you, it's God's 911. We were in our RV and we had a a tornado coming across the water at us on the beach. Mm. And um, I'm telling you, I was inside praying Psalm 91 and 92. So 91 because of how the situation was for help and 92 because I was already praising him because I knew he was going to do it. And my husband was outside rebuking that storm. And let me tell you, there was a pillar that rose up next to this tornado, a white pillar, rose up next to the black pillar and shoved it away from us Mm. and even dissipated it so i'm telling you my father-in-law was in the hurricane oh and he's down there in florida now so believe me my heart is there and i know the area i grew up there um Mm. and he was in his house and he was afraid and i told him before the hurricane i said dad if you get scared pray psalm 91 read it out loud he did there was a tree that fell on their bedroom, but there was another tree that was next to their bedroom that rose up to block it somewhat. But my mother-in-law wow. had been sleeping in there, and about an hour Praise earlier, she moved Hold into on. the living room. Keep my talking, father-in-law. I'll be right. Keep talking, I'll so, be right back. I'm telling you guys, all of you that are in the path of this storm, you're worried about your loved ones, whatever the case is. Read Psalm 91 out loud. It is God's 911. And he definitely answers it because that wasn't the only time that we had a tornado coming at us and we did the same thing. And I'm telling you that the Lord totally, uh, he totally Mm. took that storm apart. They were saying on the TV, they said it was a tornadic thunderstorm coming across the water. And all of a sudden they said, we don't know what happened. It's gone. So so thank you, Jesus. That's the power of God right there. Yes. We so, serve an awesome God. Thank you, amen. Lord. Jesus. Amen. There is power in the name of Jesus. Amen. amen. Like right. what you're about to sing, praise God. Amen. And I mean, look at this. This is something also that the church itself does not even think about. Yes. That God has given us authority over all principles and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world. But that would also include the first heaven, too. Yes. The first heaven has to respond to our voice because we are children of the king and we speak on his behalf. Hallelujah, Lord Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. So if the I, storm, I could write a book <laughs> about the amen. times that God saved us through so many things. And yes, we do amen. have power. And if we as a body could really learn that, and I know that's what you're preaching tonight, so... I'm, I'm not trying to preach your message, but <laughs> you okay? Go ahead. We Amen. as a body would realize who we are, and that we have that power to trample on these snakes and scorpions and to push these storms away, 
and to cause rain to fall. Let me tell you, there was, they were talking about it's going to be a drought. We're not going to get rain forever. And I said, oh, mm -hmm. I'm going to pray for rain. And let me tell you, there was rain. God will listen to us Amen. because he loves Amen. us. Right. We're his children. It says that if we will humble ourselves and mm. pray and repent, yes. then Seek he will he hear faith. our prayers from heaven and heal our land. Look, Amen. there's never been a greater time. Now, let me say for this real quick. You know, you just said that. He'll forgive our sins and heal our land. But, you know, he said, seek my face. Yes. So Lord. here's the thing. If we're seeking his face and not his hand, then we're seeking his will. And then his will is his heart. Yes. Because if we'll stop seeking his hand and start seeking his face, then when we get his face, we get his hand too. But we because we get the whole thing, we get the whole him yeah. in it. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's not just about his hand. It's about his face, seeing the face of God, kissing the face of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Because that's what praise means, to kiss, to or, or to worship. It means to, to bring a kiss toward. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, amen. Hey, I love you, that. Jesus. Lifting you up in prayer in Jesus' name, buddy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. So go ahead and sing, and I'm going to get to preaching right quick. Praise the Lord. Thank okay, you. Okay, you guys know this song. Mm. But we are going to raise the roof to heaven tonight. So if you know it, Thank sing. You, Jesus. There, there is power in yes, the name of Jesus. Mm. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. You break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Come on, guys. There is, Ooh, power there is power in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Glory. There, is there is power in the name, name of Jesus. Of Jesus. There, is there is power in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. To break, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Yes, God. He's the all-sufficient sacrifice, so freely yes, given, such a price, but yes, That there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hey, Break Lord. every chain, stop Break. every storm, save us now. There is power, mighty power, there's redemption yes, in this blessed hour. Seek his face, yes. lift yes, him up high. There is power in his name. Yes, God. 
You, Sister White, for singing. We've missed seeing you on here, at least hearing you on here. <laughs> We've really missed that because there is such an anointing that comes over me in the spirit when you sing and while we're getting ready for the service. And I just love it. It blesses me more than you'll ever know. I love you. God bless you and God bless Ricky. Thank him for me for letting y'all come tonight and sing. I appreciate it. Hallelujah. I love y'all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm getting ready to preach tonight a message in there. It is now, Tunji. <laughs> God bless, bless you. you guys. God bless you. I can't wait for you to sing Sunday. I'm excited about that. We've been talking about it today. And woo, I'm telling you. You what I think C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. talking would love to have gotten in on the conversation. We're going to be bringing something to the table. Praise Ancient God. words Amen. ever true, changing Amen. me and changing you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Praise God. Amen. Love you all. all right, y'all, I'm getting ready to go live. I'm getting ready to go live. I am live, but I'm getting ready to preach to you a message entitled Freely Receive freely given but not freely kept i'm gonna say it one more time freely received freely given but not freely kept if you got your bibles turn me to the book of matthew chapter 10 and verse 8 and we're going to get into the word of god father i thank you for your presence today i thank you tonight that you're going to go before the people and stand behind them 
I pray that you stir their hearts, that it be none of them, but all of you. Father, I declare that your word will come forth with power, truth, and understanding. Father, I thank you that people's lives are never going to be the same. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God in heaven. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. Heal the sick. Actually, let's go to verse um, 7 first. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Freely it's been received, freely it's been given. But it's not free to keep. I'm going somewhere with this. You're going to watch out now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. To ignore script, uh, wait, provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, uh, for the workman is worthy of his meat. God is going to meet your need, no matter what it is. If you'll go and do what he's called you to do, he is going to meet your need, my friend. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. As God calls he provides because god does not call the qualified he qualifies the call amen glory to god in heaven thank you lord jesus glory to god amen watch this now y'all like it or not there is a price to pay for the anointing you can't buy it but it costs everything to keep it. Did you just hear what I said? You can't buy it, but it costs everything to keep it. Amen. A sorcerer learned that one time in Acts 8, 18 through 24. He saw that the Holy Spirit was given by the laying on of hands, and he saw the miracles and working of miracles that was done by the disciples, and he said, let me buy this Holy Ghost. And the man of God said, he ain't for sale. And he said, but you know, he kept trying to buy it, the Holy Ghost, and he said, sir, your money perishes with you. You'll be blind for a time, and somebody else will lead you around because you tried to buy the Holy Ghost. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. He told him, he said, repent, but first he gave him a chance. He said, repent, so you have an opportunity. He said, repent and pray God forgive you for trying to buy the Holy Spirit, you know, but the man wouldn't repent. So let me tell you something, my friends. We need to preach the power of obedience, of repentance, and walking in that glory for for the sake of the name of jesus amen glory to god it's not your glory it's his glory it ain't your story it's his story are you hearing me he's taken us from glory to glory but between the from and the two there's a hallway called hell we go through some things but let me tell you something it's because there's a price to pay for God's miracle work and power. For the anointing is not cheap. It has, again, I say, a price to it. It costs everything. Amen. Sister Catherine Kuhlman said, it costs everything. Let me say this, my friends. If it costs God everything to get us, why are we so, so deceived into thinking it won't cost us everything to keep him? What does it cost if it don't cost money? It costs bad friendships. It costs it, it, it costs people talking about you. Because when you truly get Jesus in your life, you're going to have a lot of people talk about you. And I don't mean good. 
all your enemies are going to become your frenemies. They're going to call themselves your friends and still be that if your enemy in the background. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. It costs you your addictions. It costs you that pornography. You got to give it up. It, it costs you that drinking. You, you got to give it up. It, it costs you that hit of pot. You got to give it up to follow Jesus. There is a price to pay for the power of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. One of my spiritual daddies, A.A. A. Allen, wrote a book years ago before the Lord called him home to heaven, and it was called The Price for God's Miracle Working Power. I would highly suggest everybody get a copy of that book because I'm telling you, it will change your life forever. There is a level of holiness that we must possess. Or let me say it like this. There's a level of holiness that must possess us. Woo! If we're ever going to get anywhere in the kingdom of God. Amen. If we're ever going to get anywhere in the kingdom of God, we've got to have, have something greater than ourselves living on the inside of us. We're no longer ourselves. We belong to the king. We're a son of God. And the best part about God is even a daughter can be a son. And the, the sonship goes without gender. Well, let me say this. It's a belonging. We belong to the king. We are a child of the king. We are of the father in heaven. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Watch this. It truly cost everything. Of course it does. If it didn't cost something, it wouldn't be of any value. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that one more time, honey. If it didn't cost you anything, it wouldn't be of any value. David said on the mountain, when the man said, I'll give you the threshing floor, David said, I've already cheated God once before. I don't want to give God that which costs me nothing. I'm willing to pay a price for his power. Watch this. Jesus even said if we was going to follow him, we needed to count the cost. Luke 14, 28 through 29, he said, make sure it's worth it to you. The one about David was 2 Samuel 24, 24. Luke 14, 28 through 29, he says, Make sure that the cost is worth it. <laughs> he said, if anybody don't count the cost and you start building with that material, he said, and you run out, he said, people don't make money of you. How many people have run out of the power in their life? They've, they've ran out of the oil in their life because they've given it away to everybody. They've given away tools to build in the kingdom, and, and they ain't got nothing left to build the kingdom in their life. They didn't have enough finances together, spiritually speaking, not physically. They didn't have enough spiritual finances together. They didn't have it together like they thought they did, and they lost everything. Maybe you're watching me, and you feel like, oh, Brother HR, I've lost out with God. I, I know I'm a sinner, and I know I need to get back to God, but will he have me back? Absolutely. If you're watching this video, God wants you back. Hmm. I'm just going to say that one more time. If you're watching this video, God wants you back. You've not slipped too far that his hand can't reach you because if you're watching the video, he's the one leading you to the video. It's not me. It's him. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for the Lamb of God, Father. Thank you, Yeshua, for your sacrifice. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Even Paul spoke about how Jesus paid the ultimate high price for you and me, 1 Corinthians 6 and 20. It said we were bought with such a great price. You were bought with such a high price, Satan can't buy you back. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Jesus, watch this now. How does it tie in to the message for me to say all this? I'm glad you asked. Jesus 
was arrested at Gethsemane, the place of crushing. The place of crushing where the oil was crushed from the olives, from Mount Olivet. He's praying in the place of crushing. So if our master prayed and we're supposed to be like our master, we need to learn to pray in a place of crushing. Sister Angel, God bless you. I love you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Gethsemane. Watch this. When he left, he was on the Mount of Olives. Matthew 26. 36 through 46, he was on the Mount of Olives, the place where the oil has already been crushed. Mount Gethsemane, the Garden of Gethsemane is where they took the place to have the oil crushed. The oil's been crushed. He's now ascended back after his resurrection from the dead. He's now ascended back to the Mount of Olives, right where Gethsemane is. It's located in the same region. <clears throat> when he left the Mount of Olives, Acts 1 12, watch this. When he comes again, the anointing will break the mountain in half. Zechariah 14 and 4. The anointing will break the mountain in half. How come? Because he paid the price. He's going to split the mountain in half. And the Bible says on, a, on the left side and on the right, there will be a valley. God's going to make a valley where there's just been a mountain. Oh, I'm going to prophesy that right there to you, my friend. The anointing of God is coming upon you right now, and where there's been a mountain in your life, God's going to make it a valley right now. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody's been watching me in the video, and you've been saying, Lord, I've got a mountain that I need you to move it. But God's the one who told you to speak to the mountain. He said, if you would speak to the mountain and would not doubt but believe in your heart, and A, you will have what you ask. Then you will speak to the mountain and it will listen to you. It'll be thrown into the sea. Are you hearing me? God is going to take your mountain and make it into nothing more than a molehill for you. He's going to take it and just smooth it out. He's just going to make it small. He's going to make it into nothing. That mountain you're facing right now. Rama Mahaka Shabanda de Heshabahanda. Zechariah 14 4. His foot's going to split the mountain when he returns. He paid the price. John 19 30. It is finished. Totelestai. The prisoner can go free. The price has been paid for them. For you and me, the price has been paid. He paid for you. He paid for your life by his. Don't waste the price that was given for you. Matthew 25, 26. If you say you're going to follow God, follow. Quit playing around with all of these things. Matthew 25, 26. The man with the, with the talents did nothing with his life. And when God came to, to speak to him about it, he said, oh, everybody said on the judgment day, oh, well, we did this for you. We did that for you. And, and you know, you had got an increase here, Father. And there was an increase over in this area. And he said, good job. You did great. I'm proud of you. But when he gets to the foolish servant, the, the selfish servant, he goes to him and he says, what have you got to show for? And he says, I ain't got nothing to show for it. I, I hid my talent. I hid what you gave me. I hid, mm, Jesus, glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. I hid everything from everybody and didn't show them nothing. That's just like the Pharisees when he said, you, you hold the secrets to eternity, but you shut the door of heaven in men's faces. Lord, have mercy. There's a lot of people when they stand before God, they're going to have a 
a lot to answer for because the Bible said everything that's been done in private will be revealed openly before the Lord, before the people, and before the angels. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. There's a price to pay. We must give up drinking and drugs and promiscuity and, and, and all this other stuff and follow Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, take of me and learn of me, for my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Why are we fighting to be free when he doesn't pay the price to make us free? Jesus said, if the Son will make you free, you'll be free indeed. So stop fighting for your freedom and just accept it. Come to Jesus Christ today. Let him change your life forever. Give him your life and let him exchange it your life for his. Let him live his life, which is life everlasting through you today. Everlasting life does not begin when you physically die, but when you die to your flesh. Watch this. And you begin to live in him. Eternal life and everlasting life are two different gifts. The gift of everlasting life comes when you say yes to God. Yes to his will, yes to his way, and no to your own. And then you start letting him live through you. Your music starts changing. Your appetite starts changing for everything else. Instead of everything else, you're turning to him. You're, you're wanting God. You're hungry for the things of God. That's when you know there's a difference in your life. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. A lot of people went out there and got baptized. They got a bath with their clothes on in front of everybody, but they, they came down a dry devil, went up a wet one. There was no change in their life. There's no change. Then I, I would definitely be concerned that there may not be salvation in your life yet. Because if you truly surrender your life to God and you're connected to the true vine and the true branch, hallelujah, Jesus. Let me tell you something, my friends. There's going to be a change in your life. You're going to begin to walk a different walk and talk a different talk and live a different life. If you're tired of living a double life and you're tired of religion and you want a relationship with Jesus Christ, Pray this prayer to me. Dear Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross, that God the Father raised you from the dead, and I, I am saved. Lord Jesus, wash me, cleanse me, fill me with your precious Holy Spirit, that I might make heaven my home. Lord Jesus, come live your life through me. In Jesus' name, I surrender. Jesus. You are God. You are the judge. And I trust you fully with everything. In Jesus' name. Glory. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God in heaven. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, write to me. Let me know what God's done for you. Hour for revival at yahoo.com. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray healing. I pray deliverance in the name of Jesus. Father, fill everybody watching with the Holy Ghost and fire in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. I love you. God bless you. I'll see you in the next meeting or in the air in heaven. And I love you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to 8 Charles Revivals, for it's always the hour for revival. I am your brother in the Lord, Brother 8 Charles. And you know, of course, it's always the hour for revival. I love you. God bless. Bye.